Um, yeah, Scump, is that a massive pressure lifted off your shoulders after <laughs> after so many years of people saying that you're the best player to ever win it? I don't know that it was pressure, really. I think that the other years we just got a tough first round, and I mean you could clearly see today that when we have a a good first round match at the start of our day, we sometimes come out a little slow. So, I mean to have an easier first round this event, it just made our road a whole lot easier. And you know we 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 found our stride at the end of the event, the perfect time. I mean we could never win throwback hard point, and we just suddenly got good at it. So, I mean it, it's not really pressure, just uh, getting outplayed, but. And upland. Finally, we did it. Yeah, right. I think. And throwback upland. That one map that's like 50% yeah. win rate. That was the swing right there. Yeah. Um, same to you, Formal. Obviously, you come over from a different game. People had you as one of the biggest players, you know, to play this game. Is that, is that pressure off your personal shoulders? No, honestly, I don't think about that at all. Um, I think that me and Seth deserved it more than anybody else that didn't have one yet. Uh, in the past two years, I feel like some unfortunate events happened that prevented us from getting it, but this year I think the universe just knew that it was our time, and I think it's just really satisfying. Um, after getting into the, knocked into the loser bracket, you looked more focused and you stopped like, celebrating rounds you know, when you were winning maps, whereas you celebrated the first map against Envy and then lost the game. Was that like a team call, or did someone say something for that to happen? I feel I feel like we just we just won the game and I don't know nobody said anything we just we were like okay time to the do first it again. series we were like jittery and like our communication was pretty bad yeah we were really happy. and I think that like I said we needed like a wake up call because we thought we were gonna go in there and beat them like three zero three one yeah so that was like okay this isn't gonna be free so that like made us more focused and not screaming as much and finally at what point in the grand final did you know you'd won the game. <laughs> 30 seconds left in precinct. I was just, I wish they didn't listen to it. That would have been. <laughs> I would say the throwback uplink in the first series, that's by far our worst game mode, map, combination, you know, even even if counting like. Just that search, first series. Search, search and destroys. Yeah, well, I mean, like, if we lost that, we would have been in bad shape for, like, Scorch. Yeah. Which we just That lost. first series in total was, like, yeah. after we won that, we had good maps for the second series. Yeah. Yeah. We knew, I just knew, like, playing that we were destroying them in respawns. And that, you know, that, that first series was kind of, like, we weren't ever going to play that bad again. And then, uh, yeah. We yeah, were, I mean. We won a worse map. They weren't shooting back at all in the finals, really, so. Yeah. That just gave us, like, the most confidence. And then I kept saying, I was like, oh, the throw, or throwback mm -hmm. SMB was a freebie that we gave them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we kind of played it how we played at stage one Anaheim. versus East. Oh, Anaheim versus East. Was it, Anaheim? Oh, yeah, Anaheim. it was the same map. We played <clears> it the same way. We just did nothing with map control. Uh, mm -hmm. So we didn't really worry about that. And we played every other map great. And right, next up is ESPN. Joe? Stay right here. Sorry. Um, I think it's the question everyone wants to, to hear from you guys about. Right, the greatest cat team in history? I'll, I'll let them answer yes. it. They were, on, <laughs> they were on the considered best, so. I'll let them answer it. I'm gonna say no, so so we can keep doing this. Yeah, I, I feel like we gotta just do it on boots now. Yeah. You know, we were we were this dominant in uh, you know Infinite Warfare, AW Black Ops Three. Obviously, we didn't win champs in those games, but they're definitely not my best games personally. Uh, they're all, I'd say, probably much better in those games than I was, but. I think uh, I'll do a lot better in World War II, and I think we're all going to be really good in that game because, yeah. you know, I, I played with him in boots on the ground. We won everything. He was annoying to play in, that, in those games. He was a pain in the butt, too. They both won games on other teams in those games. Uh, so I don't know, man. Like, we're pretty close to being the greatest team, but if we went on boots, I think that'll solidify it. Scump in particular, how's it feel to get the monkey off the back, so to speak? Feels great. I mean, I, like he said, I mean, we don't really think about it when we go into a match. We don't care if it's champs, uh, you know, whatever tournament we're at. It's not really, you don't think about it when you're in the game. Obviously, you know, you think before the game and there's this much money on the line, whatever. But whenever you're actually like zoned in and focused and calling out, you don't, it doesn't matter. But I mean, it, it does feel good now because that's like the only thing that people could criticize me for was not winning this tournament. So now that we finally won it, I think it gets a lot of people off our back. As a whole, 
I mean, is this the greatest accomplishment that you guys have had as a team, as individuals? I know that you've all had many wins on your resume. I'm just curious where this ranks on your list. I think it's first for me. I think yeah, this is this this is definitely number one. I think our greatest <laughs> accomplishment though was probably just sticking together after after last year, like losing the way we did, the second seventh place. Like I thought we were done after we lost. Like I I didn't expect I didn't expect us to you know go into the next game and do anything. You know what I mean? Like it was just crazy that we stuck together. Um, you know, I've been telling Seth all year long that we're going to win the big one. That, like, this is our year where I just had the feeling. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, just being tested and, you know, pushing through that, that that's probably our biggest accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd say, yeah, it's our, the best thing we've done as a team, uh, other than sticking together, obviously, uh, because we've won everything. You know, we, we never had any problems winning at any other events. Uh, you know, sometimes we lost the odd one, but really what what really matters is if we won one of these COD champs as a team, and we finally did it. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Uh, another next is PBS, if PBS is in the house. Okay. Uh, DeSerto, Germany, France, Spain. Go ahead, guys. All right, so uh, many people expected you to win before the tournament, and after losing in the winner bracket final against Envy, uh, you ended up beating them in two best of fives pretty convincingly. So what were you guys talking about after the first loss in order to prepare for the loser bracket finals and the grand final? Um, I could go about this two different ways, but I'm going to go about it one way. We really did not care at all. Um, we knew we had to play LG if we would have I don't know, if we would have lost any sort of focus, we could have went out and got smoked by LG, uh, but we didn't. We, you know, completely <coughs> regained, you know, something we use a lot in the community, regain or, or lost full. But anyways, regardless, uh, that's exactly what we did. We kept composure. We forgot that winner's bracket final match happened, and uh, we, did the, we did the same thing in the event before at stage two. Uh, and we pretty much had the same road, minus a United, and. We go in 3-0 LG, and then we play Envy in two best of fives, and hey, we did it like two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kama, this one's for you. Uh, after achieving what's considered to be the most important title in Call of Duty for the third time now, are you still hungry for more titles, or do you consider like retiring at some point? I, I'm always hungry, man. I never really cared about anything more than winning. Uh, always try my best, and I always try to make us play the best we can as a team. Uh, and I feel like after almost, what, three years of playing, we've, we've finally just found our stride. You know, we, we know that we're capable of playing really well. Uh, individually, we're all really good, but um, I'm just happy that we finally came together and, and learned how to play as a team. And really, that's what, that's what kept us here. Um, question for everybody. Are you looking forward to the next Call of Duty as you all veterans to the game? I mean, yeah, I think that this is just a glimpse of how good we can actually be. You know, boots on the ground, we've all been considered like the best players at a certain time. So I'm really excited for the next game. I think we're going to look even better than the past three years, which is scary to think. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for my hands to not hurt as bad <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it should be a great change of pace and just, it's going to be really fun. Yeah. We've already, me and Damon have already played it a lot. and. Uh, <coughs> The game is amazing uh, in pretty much all aspects of, uh, you know, competitive play, public matches, and I'm just so, I, I wish these three months, two and a half months would just go by, you know, immediately, and we can go home and just play the new game, so, um, but yeah, the game's going to be amazing. I know we're going to be good, just, just, you know, getting a feel for how the game actually plays out. Uh, I know we're going to be good, and I can't wait to compete in it. All right. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Hey, guys. So uh, first off, formal, this question's for you. Not trying to put your ego, but many media members and fans of Call of Duty uh, regard you as one of the greatest players uh, or console FPS players of all time, and you have an MVP trophy show for it. I guess the question I have to ask you is, how are you a MVP in Call of Duty? What goes into winning that title? Um, I don't know, just all the hours that I put in. I put in a lot of extra hours this year. And I kind of felt throughout the year that, um, you know, we were just kind of trying to find our groove. Uh, and then about three months ago, I was like, 
you know, look at Octane, look at Zero, look how they're playing. Mm -hmm. Let me play like that. And um, I pretty much owe it all to my teammates because they let me play like that. Because if they weren't doing the right things, I wouldn't look that good. And that's just the truth. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I just think that all the hours I put in and just learning the game <laughs> just finally paid off. And I was going to add on to that. Before the tournament, Seth basically said, if, if Matt doesn't get MVP, we're doing something wrong. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. All right, well, of course you guys had a tough road today. You lost in the winter finals, but then came back to Sweet Luminosity. How did you guys really show that resilience uh, to really bounce back and pretty much smoke Luminosity? I think it's just because we did it two weeks ago. We were like, dude, it's the same thing. Just We played LG, and then did we play someone after LG? Or was we it played just United United United. United. Okay, so we played LG, then E United, and then it was NV two times. And so we were like, oh, we just have to be LG now and then do it again two times. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really helped us and really put a, a damper on their confidence because after that first series, they were probably like, oh, no, we're letting it slip. Mm -hmm. And they knew in the back of their minds that we did it two weeks ago. So I think yeah. that that's a big part of it. Yeah, I think that a lot of teams, when they lose in winner's bracket and have to play immediately after, as you can see throughout this event, it's, um, it's hard to do. But us four, like, I don't think we were sad or, like, discouraged. We just got really pissed off uh, by the way that we lost. And we're just excited as hell to play some more. So I think that's a great thing about our team. We can just bounce back like that. It's kind of rare to find. Um, but it, it's awesome that we can do that. Yeah, and, and I would say, I mean, if you just look at us four, we've, we've won multiple titles throughout every game. We have two rings. They finally have one. Uh, it's just experience, I feel. Um, we have almost more experience than any other team when it comes to winning and losing, I feel, at this point. Uh, so, you know, we just, we, we just always stay there. Okay, and uh, last question. Of course, everyone knows about eClassico, a rubber that spans multiple eSports. Beating MBS in the grand final 3-1-3-1, is that victory just that much sweeter because you beat Team MBS there? Uh, I, I mean, wouldn't care who we played. Yeah, it it's not matter. about beating them; it's about us winning. It didn't matter I, who we played. I would say yes, though. Why? Well, I, I didn't after <laughs> losing last year to them because that was probably oh like, yeah, that was probably the yeah. hardest loss like I've ever had. I don't know about you guys, but oh, yeah, yeah, that was the hardest loss. I was just saying that if there was any matchup that could have happened this year with the teams left for the finals to be us versus Envy, no, I was just looking at it like. E versus Cap. I don't want Cap to get a third ring before me because uh, he already caught up the last two years and obviously we failed to do so. Uh, that's the way I looked at it. Um, I just didn't want to lose to Cap. All right. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Greenlit. Um, I want to know who would win a free for all between the four of you. I am. Probably so. Yeah, probably Seth. He uses an E red. Only reason. <laughs> <laughs> he uses an E red like Ian said. He doesn't leave the ground. He's he got probably stares kinetic. at the mini map. Kinetic. He's kinetic. Higher shape speed. And that's just what Seth does. He just no credit kills me. <laughs> <laughs> Zero credit. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, if there's anyone on our team that's uh, a pub stomper, uh, that term, it's Seth. And he just. Loves that. Well, Damon's pretty good too, but Seth's He's really good. Way more pubs than me. Um, Seth would win for sure. I know. Me. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know. Um, what was the biggest difference between the winner's final loss to Envy and then those next two matches? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna just put it as simple as I can. We just got kills in that in the grand final. Uh, the winner's final. They did really well on the first map. Me and Ian did really bad. And then we kind of just kept doing bad. Um, <laughs> and then I had a good last map, but it didn't matter because we, we all just took turns doing bad. And then in the finals, I don't think anybody did bad. It was he went off, then I went off, then Matt went off, then Seth went off. And when all four of us are playing that well, like nobody can beat us. I always say, when we're playing our best, nobody can beat us. And there's no team even close to uh, our skill level when we're playing at our best versus their best. Okay. Uh, last question. With Kai going back to boots on the ground, is Heck going to take one of your places next year? <laughs> yes. Yes, I want to be the fifth. He plays on like 14-14. There's not a chance. Yeah, what the? <laughs> 
he is playing. <laughs> <laughs> what I got can't be ta uh, taught. So, so. He, I mean, he thinks that he's like really good at sniping, <laughs> but he uh, <laughs> thinks. Yeah, but check the vibe, bro. <laughs> nah, sorry, Hector. <laughs> I mean, I've played with Hector quite a bit, and I've never been really impressed with anything that he's, <laughs> uh, I have a video. That he's ever really done. Right. His communication is terrible. <laughs> There's really no positives of being with Hector <laughs> <laughs> on a team. There's really none. Optic J, though. <laughs> and I was waiting for he it. might replace uh, me next year. <laughs> All right, next is Sinelink. So the crowd was firmly behind you guys, and uh, kind of made you guys seem like esports superstars. So, how do you guys feel about being those? I think the venue definitely favored us a little bit. You think? A little bit. <laughs> um, I like this. This is probably the best champs venue that we've ever played. Yeah, in. yeah by for far. Sure. Maybe, maybe Black Ops 2. No, no was really cool. it was not. But yeah. like, there's nothing, there's no chance it's been this loud, this yeah. big. Yeah. So this like, is how it should be. Yeah. It should be about the spectators, the atmosphere, the setup, you know, it yeah. should be about that. Even yeah. under our sound canceling headphones, you, you, could, hear. you could hear, you could yeah. feel them screaming and cheering for us and yeah, I mean, I know. There's, you, you really can't describe how it feels. It's, I don't know. <laughs> I remember I remember I said before a few different matches that we played on main stage that I was looking at them as the map loaded up, and I was like, you guys hear them? Like, they're here for us. Um, yeah, they're screaming for one more map. Yeah, like, I was just like, let's put on a show for them, you know? Like, they all came out to see us, so let's give them a show, you know? And we love it. It's a huge difference at an event like this, too. Just knowing everyone there just wants you to win, it just pushes you so much further and just go the extra mile and just try so hard, you know? So you win the championship, do you savor it or do you go back to the workshop tomorrow? Oh, I'm going straight to Disney World tomorrow. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not, not kidding. Sure I'm going too. Are we all going? I'll, all, I'll stay we're, all going. Yeah. we're all going. I'm, I'm going for a week, so. I'm, I'm going to Disney World for a week? Yeah. There must be some good Pokemon. No, we got to go else. <laughs> 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 And finally, uh, you guys are about to move over to Dallas, so what are you guys hoping to bring to the Metroplex? Uh, I mean, we don't really do I, much I, I, I besides yeah. God. Just fun. It's going to be fun for them. That's it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Next thanks, up guys. is RMC Sports. Cool traditions. Um, first question, um, what did you feel about the fact this championship take place at the Amway Center in the room of the Orlando Magic? Well, that was, the coolest thing was probably the Uber drives. <laughs> what? They're, they're what? like, oh, you're playing at the Amway Center? Mm -hmm. And then they're like, what are you doing? That was the yeah. coolest part. Yeah, well, I mean, no, that, was, <laughs> that was pretty cool because everyone that we talked to in the Ubers, like, they were all shocked. Mm -hmm. They were like, like, they could not believe it. And, uh, you know, one guy, that one guy that we were with was pretty funny. Which one? Was, was I with you? Or was I don't I think so. Do you remember that one guy? No. He was a character. Anyway. <laughs> I think it was probably just like being, you know, a professional basketball team plays here. We were like the show. And I think that's really crazy. We were like probably, yeah. what were we, like half court maybe on the stage? Like, that was really cool just to see. Like how they feel. I mean, obviously they don't have chairs on the on the floor, but just the the bowl and seeing everyone getting going crazy. It was like, I don't know, it was, it was cool. And we got to see like the locker rooms for basically Shit. nothing, and we we're just walking around back there like we own the place. I mean, rooms. made me feel very awesome. short. Yeah, <laughs> all their furniture was huge. <laughs> and my last question, according to you, um, it is important for esports and Call of Duty to associate this kind of tournament to this type of place? I mean, the growth of Call of Duty is going to go up next year esports wise just because people are going to favor the game a lot more. So I think that with more attention comes more people wanting to come watch. So I think that this venue could be a normal thing. But at the moment, like right now, this is like above and beyond what we're used to. We're used to basically that setup, but it's just chairs in front of us. It's not like 
a stadium. So, I mean, with more with more spectators and more people interested in it, I think that it's a possible thing to do. But right now, I think it's a little far fetched to say. I think it'd be really cool. I think yeah. that that's probably what everyone, every single player, like like this venue uh, is probably what every single player is like dreamed of playing in. Yeah. And uh, you know, just the crowd, the stands, like just the fact that we're in a stadium. And not yeah. in a convention center. Like we, uh, as players, I'm pretty sure that every single one of us would wish to play, like, like where we just played this weekend, every single event, for like until we're done. Yeah, that was an amazing experience. It really was. I heart radio media. So, looking forward into next year and things like that. What do you want your fans to know? Because I mean, like we said, you only have a few out there. Screaming cheer for y'all. So, what do you want them to know uh, upcoming? Fresh off this win. I mean, the fact that there was that many fans like there to see us, it's incredible. Uh, the past two years, it's like they're coming out to see us all the time, and we failed the last two years. So it just felt so good to like actually do it in front of them. Like they finally came here and saw what they paid to see. You know, like some of them came from countries, uh, countries away. You know. And it was just amazing to just see a, a whole sea of green and just knowing that they're there for us and we just did it for them. And like, we were, uh, like you mentioned, the growth of eSports, uh, how would you all feel like potentially going to like the Olympics? Is that like anything that has ever crossed your mind? I wouldn't say the Olympics has crossed our minds, but that'd be cool. I mean, we played X Games. We have done X Games. Yeah. I don't know if they want us or like us being there. No, uh, yeah. The, I feel like the, athletes, <laughs> the athletes hated us. I yeah. feel like we would kind of feel the same way at the Olympics, but I mean, hell, if it ever happened, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And uh, last question is that if you were talking to someone who is uh, interested in competitive gaming and things like that or just starting out, what would you like, what advice would you impart to them or like talk to them or tell them about? You mean like to help them get into it? Yeah, to help them kind of like get into it or like really aspires to be on like the level or the platform that you all are on. I would say if you can, if you can afford it, like, and you can make your way out to an event and you see it and you have a passion for the game, like, you just got to experience one of these, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, just, just thinking about what we just played in, how can you not like watch and just know that it's just awesome? Like, it, that was an amazing. And I think just getting out to one of these is so important rather than just like watching from home or something. Um, but I would say if you can, just try to, try to find your way to one of these. That's what inspired me. I would say uh, like your passion for the game itself, um, for the fact that you know we're playing Call of Duty. Uh, if you don't love the game, if you don't love everything about it in the first place, like you probably shouldn't do it. But you know, if you if everything in Call of Duty is, is for you, I think you should do, go for it. Just to add on to that, a lot of people think they're going to come in here and just get super rich. You can never do it for that. You have to have, like he said, yeah. you have to have passion for it. If you're just doing it for, for money, you're just not, you're not going to succeed. I mean, you might succeed, but having the passion and having the drive to put out good stuff and play well, it's, it goes a long way. Game Reactor. Um, can you both use that mic that's on the corner of the table? Cheers. Uh, so my first question is, we interviewed Aix earlier on this week, and he said that it's an embarrassment that Optic lose with the squad they have. What is your guys' response to that now that you've just won champs? Which is not wrong. Yeah, <laughs> he isn't wrong. I mean, yeah, he's not wrong. Uh, Call of Duty is very day to day, so anyone can beat anyone, especially at champs. We went into every match thinking the same thing, going against Mind Freak Black in our first round and going against Envy in winners finals. We just wanted to completely destroy the other team, and you know sometimes it just doesn't happen. Sometimes you just lose, and sometimes they'll have a really good series. The skill gap in Call of Duty at this level, there's not like much room like to work with. There's everyone's very good, everyone has a very good shot. It really comes down to who's gonna who's gonna be better with teamwork, who's gonna communicate better. Who's going to clutch up when they need to? Because it can take one gunfight, and you're, it's so hard to win every... You can't win every single gunfight. Like, you could lose one gunfight that wins you a full map, and it just happens. That's how Call of Duty is. I think that's probably the most unreal expectation I've ever heard. Uh, it's just not possible in pretty much any sport ever. So, uh, 
Yeah, to, I'm, I'm saying in speaking in terms of like winning everything. Oh, okay. So it's just not it's just not possible, yeah. um, especially when you know we're playing a, a game, a Call of Duty that has probably the most extreme like elevation changes, and that just adds you know inconsistency. So uh, what we're gonna see on boots is uh, you know probably what Pat is talking about. Going into that final game against Envy, what was going through your minds knowing that you had to win two best of fives against a team that previously knocked you down? Did you change up your tactics at all? Did you counter their play style in any specific way? You want to do it? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I was going to say, like I said before, we we beat them in the same fashion two weeks ago. Um, and. I guess during during that, those matches, we did a lot of preparation in terms of watching VODs, and that really helped us succeed a lot, uh, just overall, and especially in S&D towards the end of the year. Uh, but going to this finals, we didn't do any of that. Um, we just finished LG. We went and had a talk, uh, just like, hey, guys, we're here again. Uh, we have finally made it to the finals, and we can do it. Uh, and we, we didn't change anything up. Uh, we just played confident, and we... We, well, I mean, I always, I always say when we go into the game, I'm like, listen, just, just don't get too crazy with the comms. Everyone just stay relaxed because when we're, when we're, when we're relaxed, uh, you know, we're going together, taking our time, and it just means that we're, we're playing good as a team. Whenever it's frantic and we're calling out, uh, you know, death callouts, I guess you could call it. Whenever we're calling out death callouts, like over and over and over, and there's constant communication, we're usually getting mopped and. We didn't do that in the finals. Yeah. I mean, just to add on to that, I knew that we were going to win after we won the first series. Um, I can't even imagine the flashbacks that NB players were thinking um, after we did take the first series. Whether they'll admit it or not, it, it does fl cross your mind. Um, and our team was just the opposite. We were like, yeah, we're doing this again, you know? And we were just all smiles. We weren't like screaming anything like Damon said. We were just laughing together and we were just like, let's do this together, you know? Like, we can do it. We did it a week ago, and that also helped our mentality going into that match. But, um, yeah, I think we knew that we had that. Crazy event, probably the best venue that we've ever played at, and uh, probably the best win we've ever had. And you know, there's just we're on top of the world. Uh, do you consider you guys as uh, the best team ever on this game? Well, on this game, I mean, if if you say that we're not, then you're yeah. crazy. We're the we're the only team to win twice. We're the only team to win three times. Four to we're the only team to win four times. That's what I was getting to. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so yeah, if you say anything otherwise, then you're just, you're just silly. Uh, I, I mean, the franchise. Oh yeah. Like in Call of Duty. Oh, in Call of Duty. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. We're the best. <laughs> I'm never gonna not say that we're not the best because I think, like I said, I always say it. We're playing at our best, and nobody's better than us. Like, their best is down here, and our best is through the roof. Yeah. Um, that, next year, uh, this is not a question. Uh, next year, uh, you guys coming back to the ground. Uh, how do you feel about World War II come? Uh, I mean, I think the game's great. Uh, just as long as Seth baits for us every once in a while, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> for uh, for me personally, knowing that I'm going to be the AR role, I feel like these past three years, um, in Ghost I was a I was a sub player, but when I switched over uh, to Optic, I became the AR player. And these past three years, I've been shooting at people that are flying over walls, and like it was like I don't know how it was so hard. So I, I think when we go back to Boots, and I just know that I can just stare down a lane. It's just like, it's gonna feel 10 times easier, and I'm really excited. Um, Lagazetta? What you said. What was this? No? 
Hey, as long as y'all are rotating with the ARs, if not, you might have to go back to Vector. I'd be fine. I'd be fine. Let me get to the ball. Leave it around. I miss uh, just help triggering. Good. Okay, so how do you think you spend the money you earn today? Straight to the financial planner. <laughs> Where's Where my mama? She? Where is she? Yeah, where is she? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna save up. I don't have any. I mean, I'm going to Disney World. I wasn't joking. But uh, other than that, just save up. Just keep saving. This isn't this isn't gonna last forever, but we could uh, enjoy the extra money um, just day to day. You know. All right, Ellis Manoa. Uh, well, uh, how hard will, was the the preparation for this tournament? The the weeks before? I think the, the, uh, the, the pool play week, the fact that we had a whole week to like, you know, be together, like, you know, get our chemistry up and just land and just practice. And that was probably the best situation that we could have been in. And I think that, you know, just that win, just we were on top of the world after that. And uh, champs, you know, was what, two weeks after? So yeah. it's kind of hard not to be really confident. Yeah, and I would say, uh, for people who don't think landing before a, a land is beneficial, well, we stayed in Columbus, Ohio after our stage two group play, and we scrimmed Envious for a whole week, and what do you know? Yeah. We're both in back-to-back -back finals, so uh, if anyone ever thinks that that doesn't mean anything, uh, they're just wrong. You just gotta have the right teams, and it's the best practice you can get, because online's online, but LAN is, LAN is the best version of Call of Duty that we're gonna play, and that's what we're going to play at tournaments, so I'm just happy that we all uh, were able to do that and, and stayed around just for a little a little longer. Uh, another question. Uh, what, do you, what do you think is the key to be successful as team? Good vibes. Yeah. Just, just having good chemistry and like being able to trust the person next to you, regardless of the situation. I think that goes a really long way. And um, I think that people really like underestimate the fact that you have to like know your teammates inside and out, like mm -hmm. of the game, to be able to be. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> but no, it's it's really a chemistry thing. You just have to be on the same page all the time, and being being friends outside the game helps out so much inside the game that people don't really realize. Yeah, thank you. And last but not least. Um, do you think it'd be interesting to increase the number of live events and tournaments during the competitive season? You're saying, uh, do we, would it be a good thing to increase the amount of live events we have? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think everyone would be all for it, you know? Um, if you've played online Call of Duty, you know that sometimes it's not that fun, but uh, events like these, if we could do them, I don't know, a couple times a month, although that'd be a little crazy, uh, everyone would be happy. It's, it's so fun to play in events like these. Uh, just like the overall feeling and just, I don't know, I keep bringing up LAN, but I just love playing on LAN. It's, it's the best version of Call of Duty you can play. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and actually, I think just had one question. Yeah. So for some of you, this is the first time you won a championship. How does it feel to finally have the ring on your finger? I mean, I think it's deserved. Yeah. I think that we are just two of the top players that never had one, and a lot of the other top players pretty much had one besides us. So to finally get it, it's it's a great feeling because now you know we're part of that elite, and we can never be like said, talked down on for not having one. We're, we're finally there. So yeah, we were way. Me and him were just way too good to not have them, and now that we do, it just I don't know. It just feels. Very satisfying. So you guys mentioned you really liking this venue. Do you think playing in such an arena affected your gameplay? Yeah, I, th I think that uh, when we see the crowd, like you don't. I mean, when you get into the game, you don't notice the background. But when you're standing up and you're like getting hyped and you look out and you just see that, it's like it's. I can't describe it. It just it just m motivates the hell out of you to just win, you know, you just want to do so well and just, I don't know.
It was awesome. See so you get hype again. Yeah. yeah. And I would say, I mean, when we were backstage, we were just sitting there and we were like, this kind of feels like an ESWC, because when we, when we go over there to France, uh, the crowds have always been insane. Um, and obviously, we've had crowds like that in Dallas, uh, Anaheim. Unfortunately, we didn't make the finals this year at Anaheim, but uh, like every time we've had a huge crowd like that and we've made it to a Sunday, uh, we've just, you know, played amazing, honestly. And so, so yeah, it's, it's awesome that we have all these fans. You guys seem really excited for the next Call of Duty game. How confident are you for the next season? Uh, incredibly, I think. I mean, there's been a lot of questions that are we the best team of all time in Call of Duty history? And I think that that's our first year to finally prove that because we've been playing a different version of COD than our the team that people say is on our level. So to finally be able to play a Call of Duty that's boots on the ground and back to original, it's you know it gives us our final chance to like prove that we actually are the best team. Yeah, we, we made this team to be called the best team in the world. Um, and I think after next year, if we do win champs again, then I don't think anyone would doubt that.